networking across cultural divides. But before that, who's this guy? Was anyone in the other room? <laughs> okay, you know all about me. You guys don't listen. You guys, you should have been in the other room. I was amazing. <laughs> so I've spent the last 20 years probably working all around the world. So my job has been working for large network agencies, so Gray, IPG, and now George P. Johnson. And my job is to go and make things happen in different countries. That's really what I do. So I've got a lot of experience and a lot of advice to offer in how to make that work. So I'm going to run through, and it's not going to take 40 minutes. This bit's going to be very quick, and it's not as funny as the last one, because there's lots of, uh, lots of rules in this one. So who's this guy? Any ideas? Who is he? Yeah. Who do you think he is? What do you think he does for a living? A bouncer. Motorcycle gang. Okay. You're a load of prejudiced people. This guy earned $12 million last year investing in the stock market. Of that $12 million, he gave $10 million away to charity. Don't make up your mind too quickly, guys. That's what this bit's all about. Do you know, we're all different. We're all just like everybody else. We might be a pretty snowflake to ourselves, but we're the only people that can see it because to everyone else, we're all the same. And the more you understand that, the easier it is to get over your ego and work across cultural and departmental problems. Because at the heart of everything, and I've done this bit of presentation, not exactly this presentation, because I made it just for you, because you're special. You really are. I've done this presentation in Dubai, and I've done it in Turkey, and I've done it in China, and I've done it in Japan. We're all the same. We are really all the same. And we all want almost exactly the same things from, from exactly the same places. So, we want success. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh. We all want success. We all want our kids to have a good time. We all want our kids to be educated and do better than we did. Davina. It's my daughter down here. We all want wealth. Scrooge McDuck wants wealth. And we all want successful relationships. <laughs> I wish that were me. We all want successful relationships. So it doesn't matter where you're from, what religion you support, what football team you support, what language you speak. At the heart of every person is the same desires and drivers. And actually, the reason for the Hell's Angel picture at the front was to show how quickly we make up our minds about people. They won't like me. I'm not going to talk to them. They don't like Colombians. It's not true. It isn't true. It's you that's thinking that. And what you have to understand in all of this stuff is the thoughts you're having about other people are your thoughts. They're not in their head. These are in your head, and you're putting your thoughts in their head and hating them for doing it. It's like, guys, it's like when your wife or girlfriend wakes up and says, I had a terrible dream and you were horrible to me last night. But it was a dream. Yeah, but you were horrible. <laughs> but it wasn't me. Don't make up your mind too quickly, and don't believe the thoughts you're having actually belong to someone else. 
That is the key to success in collaborative working and, work and networking. I've got one simple rule. It's my golden rule. Whoever has the gold makes the rules. So wherever the power is in the relationship, wherever the money's coming from, they're usually the person in charge. And actually, what you've got to do in those situations is take your ego out of the game. Because it's what you're thinking and it's what you're doing that's stopping you achieving success in that particular environment. The minute you take ego, I'm not doing that. Why are they telling me to do that? I don't, I'm not that sort of person. I won't do that. Actually, you will do that. There was a great, um, there was a great film, um, oh God, 20, 30 years ago. It's called The Magic Christian. And it was two guys, multimillionaires, who decided what they were going to do is prove how much money people would need to do something terrible. So how much would um, the curator of an art gallery need for him to destroy an amazing piece of art? Once you realize actually it's all your ego, then you can get over the fact that there are barriers. Because the barriers are created by your own ego. The barriers are created by you imagining what's going on as opposed to what's really going on. And if you can take that out of the equation and see things really as they really are. You know, the, there are three things, aren't there? There's the person we think we are, the person other people think we are, and then the person we really are. So if we can be the person we really are, then we're on the road to success and networking in this multi, this multicultural society. Because really, the trick is to think about how we're going to add value. The trick isn't to worry about where you are. The trick is not to think about where you are and what it means to you. The trick is to think about what you're doing and how you're going to add value to that process. It's not really about you. It's about the end result. So I don't know what businesses you work in, but it's about the client. It's about the patient. It's about the customer. It's about the business in general. What are we going to do to join this team and add value to it? Then all of those things go away because you're not focusing on yourself. You're focusing on the results. And the better the results, the better you do. The better you do, the easier it becomes. Because, as I said in the other room, when you weren't listening, we are all pretty amazing. We've all got something to offer. I used to talk to my kids about, we've all got a superpower. We've just got to decide what it is. Which superhero are we? What is the unique thing we bring to this party that no one else can bring? Now, once you understand that, and it was part of the personal branding thing, once you understand what your contribution is, you worry less about what everyone else is thinking, because you've got a job to do. And actually now, today's world is diverse. London is diverse. I can't, I can't remember what we did. I think we, George P. Johnson delivered in 166 countries in the last year. I didn't even know there were 166 countries. 166, I think there's... I can't remember what the numbers are, but the number of nations that are here in London is just incredible. And actually, the key to success is being one of the team. To be a good team member. And you've got to know what you're bringing to the party. There's an old thing in poker. Poker, anyone? Anyone play poker? No? When you're playing cards and you're playing poker, there's an old expression, if you don't know who the idiot is, it's you. <laughs> so if you can't spot the idiot in the team, what you have to do is work out what you're bringing to the party. And if, you're, if this isn't the party for you, move on. You can't be the successful one in every party. 
So as I said, it's about understanding what you're bringing to the party. And it's not about, you know, in a, in a team, in a diverse group, in a networking group, it's not about trying to shine all the time. You know, if you look at any stage show, the spotlight doesn't stay on the same person all the time. It moves around the stage. You can't be the star of every single show every single time you turn up. You have to let others shine. So it's not about outshining the group. It's about adding value to the group. It's about being supportive, which, funny enough, ladies do much better than men. So men. So it doesn't matter where the ideas are coming from, as long as the ideas are coming. It doesn't matter where the success is coming from, as long as the success is coming. And it's much better to work collaboratively than it is to work individually. You are much better together than you are apart. Ideas, initiatives, innovation, thinking comes better out of a group than it does out of an individual. Go and lock yourself in a room and see how fun that is. It's about being a group. And it's about not worrying about the role you're playing as long as you're playing a role. You don't always have to be the leader. So, and again, um, the, the, the success is about relationships. And like any relationship, so we do so many things in our personal lives that we don't take into our business lives. So building relationships in your personal life, when you first meet the girl or the man of your dreams, you will do anything for them, will you not? Turn up any time, go anywhere, pick them up, drop them off, pick up their cleaning, whoa, clean the house. You don't really care, because you've got no ego. You don't do that at work, do you? I'm not doing that. I wouldn't do that. Don't ask me to do that. It's about relationships. So think about your work relationships as your real personal relationships. Treat them the same way. Now, I'm not saying you have to pick up the cleaning, but what I am saying is just take your ego out of the equation. Because, as I said at the start, we're all roughly the same. We all roughly want the same things out of life. So people like people. We all like each other all ordinarily. It's the barriers we're creating in our own mind that are stopping us being effective in terms of uh, collaboration and networking. You have to make things happen. Things don't happen by accident and things don't happen at all unless someone takes responsibility for making them happen. And usually in a group there's a person that does that. There's a person that makes it happen. But it's not always their responsibility. You've got to share that. And you've got to trust in the people around you. You know, I trust everyone all of the time. And I'm, I've proved in my life 99.9% .9 successful. It's very rare people will misplace that trust. You've just got to let it happen. And also, I, as I said at the start, relationships are difficult. Work relationships are a bit more difficult because there's status involved, there's different departments, different, and cultural relationships are different because you believe in different things roughly, you support different teams, you stand up at different things, you cheer at different things. But actually, the only way to break those down is to get to know each other. It's really, really simple. Now, I'm not advocating going to get drunk, but sometimes going to get drunk is a good excuse. It's about honesty, and it's about real relationships. So if you want to make it work, and if you want to make networking and collaboration work, socialize. Get to know people. Ask them questions. People like to talk about themselves. I know I do. Especially girls. And sometimes you don't even need to listen to the answer. No, I'm sorry, I'm being rude. <laughs> Guys, there's a hint. So in terms of where we're going with this, so how do we collaborate? We share. Collaboration is sharing, and if you're not going to share, you're not going to collaborate. If you're not going to share, you're not going to network, because to get something, you have to give something. You know, to get a smile, you have to give a smile. To get help, you need to give help. Again, back to the ego thing. 
It's really, really easy. But in this context, especially in the work environment, scaring can be sh uh, scaring. Sharing can be scary. Because when you've got something, you've got knowledge. And knowledge is power. And if you give up your power, you've got nothing. But you've empowered someone else. And now together you can move forward. Don't be control freaky. The more you give up, the more you get back. I know it's a cliche, but it is true. And the more you share, the easier it is to share. And the more you share, the more effective it becomes and the easier it becomes and the results will start to um, be produced. It's not that hard. It's just hard to take the first step. It's like all those cliches. They're, they're cliches because people keep repeating them because they're true. You know, a marathon begins with the first step, that sort of stuff. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. It is. But they're only true because people keep repeating them. The more you share, the easier it becomes. The more you share, the easier it becomes. Took me ages to get that coat on him. <laughs> and the hat, don't even ask me about the hat. So you've got to be open, you've got to be honest. You're all on the same team, so you need to treat everyone the same. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your background is. You need to treat everyone the same. And I'm talking to you because you're in the room, but I say the same to everyone. It's hard, I know, to treat everyone the same. But we all have these preconceived ideas, like the Hells Angel at the beginning. We all think we know what's going on, but we don't. The more open you are, the easier it gets. Yeah. <laughs> so the words you can't see on this side are, be honest. Be honest. Do you know, the thing about honesty is, so who in this room has never made a mistake? No. <laughs> who in this room has made a mistake? Okay. So we've all made a mistake, but we're scared to admit that we've made a mistake. So when you make a mistake, when you do something wrong, when you think something's going wrong, just be honest, because everyone in the room has made mistakes. Everyone on the other side who you think is going to judge you, they've made bigger mistakes. Do you know, I've, if my daughter wasn't here, I would tell you some of the mistakes I made. <laughs> They're huge. But we've all done it. And no one judges anyone, but you just can't get it out there. It's a barrier. And the more you worry about it, the harder it is to connect. Then everyone thinks there's something going on. The, the, Everyone knows you're not telling them something. It's about honesty. It's about honesty in your relationships. And I think the, the thing that I've learned is that as soon as you put it out there, everyone goes, yeah, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's never, that, it's never as important as you think it is. And to really connect cross-culturally, cross... And, and, you know, I don't know what we're talking about here, but, you know... The English and the Scots have a thing. The Germans and the Dutch, the blacks and the whites, the red. It's just not true. As groups, sometimes we look at the other group and think they don't like us. But as individuals, we all love each other. So you've just got to get over those things. Be honest. Honest and open and constant communication. Even when you're asleep. Constant communication. People need to know where they are, what they're doing, how you, th how you feel. I'm really talking to the guys in the room now because the girls do this usually anyway, even if you don't want them to. You need to let people know what's going on. You need to let people know where you are. I don't get it. I'm not comfortable with it. I don't understand it. I can't do it. Be honest. Constant communication. Can someone help me? We talk about it all the time. We talk about honest, open communication, but very few people do it. 
And if you take anything out of this today, honest, open communication. As we said, we all make mistakes. I think that's Celine Dion, isn't it? That's a great outfit. We all make mistakes. So, as I said, admit it, move past it, because as soon as you've got it off your chest, actually, it is a relief. You don't need to worry about it anymore. <laughs> Does anyone remember this girl? Yeah, yeah. She said she didn't ask for these tattoos and that she, yeah. She asked. We, we have to learn, you know, the, the thing about mistakes is it's an, it's an experience. I read the other day because I'm into experiences. You know, we never forget a single experience we've had, ever. But it's important that we use the good stuff and remember the bad stuff so that we're learning and moving on. It's about us. So we, as humans, are called pattern-forming. So the more we do something, the deeper ingrained in our brain is that pattern. It's like animals, you know, being able to suckle or to find their way back home. The more we do something, the deeper the pattern. The more we do it, and that's where habits come from. The deeper it goes, the more we do it, the more reinforced it gets, the bigger it gets. But what we've got to do is we make sure that we're reinforcing the good stuff. Okay, the bad stuff, remember. The good stuff, do more of. That creates good and healthy patterns. That's how we improve our behavior. And whatever happens, don't sulk. Don't get miserable. No one likes a miserable person. You might have good reason to be miserable. Do you know that thing, I, I don't know if you do it, but we do it here. When you say to someone, how are you feeling? What you don't want them to say is, yeah, I'm feeling terrible. You want them to say, yeah, I'm great. Because in teamwork, in workplaces, in work environments, what you want is good, committed, enthusiastic team members. We all make mistakes. We all have bad things happen to us. Move on. Learn, move on. Don't hold it against the group. Don't hold it against yourself. It's important that you get it off your chest, and it's important that you let people know what's going on. You know, the minute you admit that something's upset you, the quicker you get over it. So, I'm not happy with the way this worked. I thought you would do that, and I thought I would do that. Actually, now I feel better. You've got to get it off your chest, you've got to move on. Because in these environments, you know, we put up with the sulking of our partners and our lovers and our wives and our husbands and our children because we love them. But in a work environment, yeah, we like our colleagues. We don't love them. They don't need to put up with it. They just move on. Sulky, move on. Again, you've just got to keep going. As I said in the other room, fail Fail faster, fail again. Try, try harder, try again. Failure, experience, try again, something else. It's about willingness to learn. And the only way you learn sometimes is fail. You know, there's a, there's a, um, there's a reason why, I don't know if you've ever been to one of those things where they teach you how to juggle. The reason they teach you how to juggle, adults, because we've, we've forgotten how to fail. The only way you can learn how to juggle is by dropping the balls. Dropping the balls is failure. But the more you fail, the more you realize what you've got to do to succeed. You've got to drop some balls. Sorry, Davina. You've, you've got to drop some balls. You've got to fail. Because by failing, you learn. You move past it and you learn. You don't dwell. So for me, it's all about conversations. It's all about real conversations between real people in real relationships. Not false relationships, essentially honest relationships. You want good relationships in everything. 
This is my key slide, everyone. You've got two ears and one mouth. Use them in that proportion. Listen twice as much as you talk, ladies. Listen. <laughs> listen twice as much as you talk. It will change your life. I promise you. I don't lie. Do I, Dave? And relationships are rewarding. Making friends is rewarding. Cross-cultural working is rewarding. Working in diverse teams to see what you can achieve is rewarding. You know, I did a, we just did a pitch for um, a, uh, an Ericsson project. I think we had eight nationalities working on the pitch. It was amazing. We had ideas in there that not any single one person could have done that didn't belong to any single one group, but the work was remarkable. It's very, very rewarding. And why should we bother? Well, we all know it's tough out there. We know the economy's going in a bad way. Individually, we're great. Together, collectively, we're a lot greater. Thank you.